，我们已经不是鸦片战争时的中国，中国人民已经站起来了。Hey, Law Winners, it's Law I86 here with another video. And today we're talking about cotton. Isn't cotton the most fascinating topic you've ever heard of? Well, honestly, cotton has actually caused a massive issue, especially in dealing with diplomacy and China. There's a couple things you have to understand first. There is a genocide going on in Western China, and it is caused by the Communist Party of China, the leading government, the authoritarian dictatorship that runs the PRC, the People's Republic of China. Now, within the borders of Xinjiang, this western province, that's actually the biggest province in China, there is a minority of people there called the Uyghurs. And the Uyghurs are a different race of people. They are not Chinese. They have their own language, they have their own culture, they have their own food, they have their own religion. They are culturally separate from the Han Chinese people. Now, the way that China works is it's not a melting pot democracy like you'd have in the US or maybe in Europe. What China is, is a country that is very, very homogenous in the way that it wants to run itself. It wants the Han people, which is the majority race, to be the ruling group of China, and everyone else has to fall in line. Now to do that, what China does is creates genocide. And genocide is happening in Western China, in, in Xinjiang, against the Uyghur people because they are not, in fact, Chinese. They set up concentration camps and re-education camps where they send millions of these Uyghurs into to be re-educated and give vocational skills and to, to get rid of their language and to force them into servitude and worship of the Communist Party against their own will. Families are separated, it's horrifying, there's allegations of forced sterilization, rape, torture, and all kinds of horrific, nasty things. Now, something that the Chinese government is doing to amplify the disgusting nature of the, the genocide in Xinjiang, which is gradually getting recognized by countries around the world as a, being a true fact, the Chinese government found a way to profit off of it. There has been proof of companies that are able to supply you with Uyghur minority workers. They can send troops of them for performances, for hard labor, for factory work. Now there's tons of allegations of the Chinese government using Uyghur people from the concentration camps and putting them into situations of forced labor through picking cotton. Now they couldn't have picked a more apt crop to force the Uyghurs into slave labor with, could they have? Now what happened was, is that the rest of the world kind of caught on. And there's this Fair Cotton Act thing, basically, where companies have to subscribe to the idea that our cotton should be, if, if we're gonna be using it for our company, our cotton should be picked ethically. All of a sudden with the allegations that the cotton was coming from slave labor in Xinjiang, from concentration camps in, in the current genocide of Xinjiang, some companies said, ooh, we need to make sure that our cotton's not coming from slave labor, right? Now just by these statements, you'd think that's innocuous, right? Just with these statements, the Chinese government saw this as a delicious opportunity to throw all of these brands, which operate out of China, a lot of these brands, by the way. They operate with Chinese labor, Chinese funding. One of the biggest ones being H&M, the Swedish company. A lot of these brands like Nike and H&M, what happened was is they, they found out that some of their cotton was potentially coming from slave labor in Xinjiang. So they wanted to rectify that. They said, hey, maybe we shouldn't be using slave labor cotton. It's probably not a good look for our brand the Chinese government went ape. They said, this is the perfect opportunity to stoke nationalism. They've done this in the past when they went against uh, Korea, when they went against Japan, when they went against iPhones. They want to stir up the populace into a nationalist frenzy. So what they did was say, listen, if you're a proud Chinese person, you will boycott the brands that are not using cotton from Xinjiang because of genocide. I'm not even joking you. It is now a point of pride amongst the Chinese populace to boycott brands that are using genocide slave labor cotton. That's the world that we live in today. H&M was caught at the forefront of this. Now H&M was boycotted. You can't even use the ride sharing app, which is like uh, Uber, the ripoff of Uber, it's called DD in China. You can't use that app to hail a taxi to go to an H&M store, I, I kid you not. They actually banned that. And you can't order clothes from H&M on the internet in China now. That being said, all of these other companies that didn't really just go against the grain, they didn't just come out and say, screw China, we're not gonna deal with this, uh, we're not gonna deal with this market anymore because of the oppression of Uyghurs. Most of these countries were very reluctant to, to do this. Are you gonna tell me that Nike is, a, is an ethical brand? I mean, let's not even kid around here. My point is that because of the Fair Cotton Act, all these companies that have to make sure that they're Western buyers, don't think that they're they're sourcing genocidal slave labor cotton. 
they had to make some adjustments, right? And they had to make some statements about how maybe we should source elsewhere. Now, when China kicks something into a frenzy, they make sure they do it to the benefit of the CCP. So they have really, really high level actors and actresses that are boycotting all their sponsorships and brands, Adidas, Nike, H&M, left and right, bam, 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 bam. All of these companies are screwed within the Chinese market because of this. Now, this is hugely beneficial for the Chinese government that always wants to stoke pride in national brands or domestic brands, which is whatever. I mean, a country wants to promote its domestic brands, that's life. The problem is, is that these domestic brands are being stoked up for the promotion of genocide in Western China, in Xinjiang. China's gone all the way in on convincing its populace that the genocides in Xinjiang don't exist. And if they do, which if they backtrack on the fact that they don't exist, if they do, they're just vocational camps that are giving opportunities to stupid, dirty terrorists. The whole sentiment of Uyghur people, the Uyghur minority in China amongst the Han populace has always been pretty negative, but the, the government, the central government has stoked that. They want the local populace to think that these poor, uneducated idiots over in Western China, they would be lucky to be Chinese. They need to participate in our Chinese culture and our Chinese society because that is the way forward and we own them basically. And literally it's become that with the allegations of slave labor. So these local brands are getting pumped up by celebrities and not that they have any choice to be honest, but celebrities and government stoked national fervor to promote the idea that these gen the genocide in Xinjiang is justified. So now these brands that traditionally suffered in China, to be honest, because like Nike and Adidas is much more uh, attractive than something like Anta or Li Ning. These brands have been considered kind of low class or for poor people within China, um, have always taken a back seat to these Western brands or these other, I should say foreign brands. And it just goes to show you, and I've said this a million times, these Western companies or companies from different countries, they, their, their market existed before the Chinese market, but the Chinese market is so vast and sweet to them that they will do anything to capitulate to that Chinese audience. The problem is, is there's conflict, right? Before people turned a blind eye to China's human rights atrocities because, it's, oh, it's just China over there, whatever, and greedy companies would wanna go get a piece of that pie. Now, when there's more focus on that and people are talking about genocide and the fact that it's 2021, we have the equivalent of Nazi Germany bubbling up over in East Asia. That's a point, that's a talking point that people are talking about now, so you can't ignore that. So companies have to make a choice, right? You either alienate completely your Western audience on the principles of we don't give a shit about human rights and atrocities, we'd rather have the Chinese market, but at the same time, you have to capitulate to the Chinese market and hope that they don't throw you under the bus. Because guess what? That's usually what happens. A lot of these brands have nothing to do with this. They were totally fine with the Xinjiang uh, Uyghur genocide cotton. But because of statements or our affiliations with other companies or whatever, or because even rumors online, it's enough to get fully banned and run over within the borders of China. So I've said this a million times, these companies, you can, you can think that you're gonna get a piece of the China pie and you probably will for a little while, but you will get slapped in the face and it might not even be your fault. You might be totally fine with the human rights atrocities. You'll still get run over in this madness of nationalism. And that's the nature of the beast of doing business in China. And we're seeing that now. We're seeing companies that have to make a choice. Some companies are staying silent. The other companies in this dumpster fire have chosen the Chinese market like Asics, the shoe brand, that have promoted the idea of, yes, we use Xinjiang cotton. Because to them, this Japanese company is more important that they satisfy the needs of, of their Chinese audience. Uh, rather than abroad. They obviously had a meeting and they looked at the numbers and said, this is more important. Or Muji, for example, the Muji is a clothing slash snack brand. You might, you might have seen in airports around the world. They've also cho chosen to side with China because China is such a massive market, right? The problem is, is that they still get boycotted. The problem is, is you can go shill for the Chinese government. You can go shill for the CCP. And this is what I say to the, the CCP shills out there. You can shill for them all you want, but they don't care about you. You will be used as fodder. Whether you're a company, whether you're a person that's promoting social media for the Chinese government, you will be run over as fodder. You, you're meaningless. The stability and central power of the Chinese government is more important than any of this stuff. Just because you suck up to the right person at the time doesn't mean that's an everlasting blessing for you being able to get away with whatever you want. Or you can be like Hugo Boss, which I'm surprised that's even still a brand. I never even hear about them anymore. But Hugo Boss decided to tell the US news that they've never used Xinjiang cotton. They've never, they've never touched the bloody cotton with slave labor. They don't do that, they source ethically produced cotton. Meanwhile, they went over in the Chinese market and said, we proudly use Xinjiang cotton. We use Xinjiang cotton for our products and we will not boycott Xinjiang cotton because 
we understand that our Chinese market is very important and you Chinese customers are important. They played both sides. And to get away with that, what Hugo Boss did was they didn't themselves procure the cotton. They used another company that procured it for them from Xinjiang. So they were able to say both things. Now, let's be honest. I mean, we can champion whatever company we want. We can go say, oh, now I'm gonna go buy H&M or now I'm gonna go support this company because they stood up to slave labor. But at the end of the day, these companies are by and large not innocent of this whole thing. They're kind of like casualties in this whole situation. And I say casualties because they didn't necessarily go out there and say they weren't gonna buy Xinjiang cotton anymore. They went out there and had to deal with the international consequences of this and maybe passively ended up getting screwed over by their Chinese market as well. Now, will this last? Well, for example, the Korean company Lot or Lati, however you wanna say it, ended up getting mowed over by Chinese protests and never came back. But look at Apple. People were smashing their iPhones all day, smashing Apple stores. That Apple's still pretty freaking popular in China. Didn't work on that one. These protests get pretty violent. I mean, when there's anti-Japan protests, they'll overturn Japanese cars. They'll, they'll freak out and burn down sushi shops. The thing is this, is, this government nationalism is stoked and they want it to be stoked to promote local brands. They want it to be stoked so that the attention can be drawn away from actual issues. And this is always how it is. When there's something that China can't deal with, there's something that China's worried about, they will stoke nationalism in something like this. It's like clockwork. Anti-America this, anti-South Korea that, anti-Japan this. And today the flavor of the week is anti-companies that don't want to support genocide, at least passively. It turns out these things are usually a flash in the pan. Sometimes they can have lasting impact. The thing is at the end of the day, the real people who get hurt here are not who you think it is. It's actually just the normal Chinese people too. We can separate the slave labor and Uyghur genocide from this conversation for a second and say, the employees for H&M and Nike and all these companies and stuff and the manufacturers and the, the factory workers, the people that market for the companies, these are all Chinese people. So when these Chinese people are being told by the government to boycott these brands, they're also hurting Chinese people too. So you can look at these celebrities, you can look at all this massive boycott. If you boycott Xinjiang cotton, we'll boycott you. They come out with these cringe t-shirts and these cringe lines about how China will never be messed with because you can't get involved with their internal affairs. Look what happened to the Diaoyu Islands. I mean, the Diaoyu Islands are the Senkaku Islands. China made such a big deal out of these like little bird shit stained islands in the middle of the ocean that they claimed to be a part of China since ancient times. And they lost that one. They're contested, but Japan, effectively owns them now. They stoked nationalism, they sponsored They sponsored all kinds of uprisings and movements as long as they're organized under the CCP. <laughs> to the point where a lot of destruction was had and they stoked the anti-Japanese sentiment. So the people didn't pay attention to other things like maybe for example, the huge corruption case with Bo Xilai or for example, the downturn in economic progress within China. They stoke these things and then ultimately a lot of times end up losing them. So don't ignore what's happening with the dumpster fire that is the Xinjiang cotton episode. Look at it more as a symptom of what's happening. Sanctions are working against China. It's pissing off the Chinese government. All these countries coming together and holding hands and saying, we're not gonna tolerate another Nazi Germany again. It's working against the Chinese government. China, the Chinese government is pumping out thousands upon thousands of YouTube videos with fake forced confessions from Uyghur minority people in Xinjiang province, pretending like they have happy lives. All of this horrible knee-jerk coercion is China really, really jumping the gun. And instead of calculating their diplomacy and thinking about how they're gonna deal with this, rushing to stoke nationalism so people don't pay attention to it. But unfortunately, the side effect is that the rest of the world's not stupid and sees through all this bullshit. And when you see through all the bullshit, you understand that why would you so fervently try to protect something that's not really happening? If it's really not happening, why haven't you let investigators or journalists in to see that there's no concentration camps there? Why are you so fervently denying it and forcing people with literally government mandates to go out there into towns in Xinjiang and go film Uyghur people and make them say that they're happy and they're not happy with the rest of the world's response to this. It's kind of like a criminal running back to the crime scene. But I'm super happy that this is happening because the sooner this conversation happens, the more progress we can make with the Chinese government and how badly they're behaving. 
I want to say thank you so much to the people on Patreon, patreon.com slash law86. I answer my messages there every single morning, every, every Monday to Friday. We have a great conversation and you support the channel that way. So I super appreciate it. And I want to say thank you so much, Law Winners, and I'll catch you on the next one.